and welcome to the final part of our story of Easter. And you'll notice that the story tent has changed. It's changed to look a bit like a tomb. A tomb is a place where a dead body is buried. Sometimes it's like a cave or a little room cut out of rock. When Jesus died, some of his friends took his body down from the cross and buried him in a tomb in a garden. They wrapped him first in burial cloths. They added some nice smelling spices and oils to make it smell better. And then they rolled a huge heavy stone over the entrance so the body would not be disturbed. Some of Jesus' close friends and family members watched from a distance as they sealed the entrance with the big round stone. One of them was a woman called Mary Magdalene. Now the people in charge of the temple decided that they didn't want anyone to move or steal the body. With Jesus dead, they wanted that to be the end of it. So they asked Pontius Pilate to put some soldiers at the tomb to guard it. And that's what they did. All Friday night and all through Saturday, the soldiers were guarding the tomb. But as Sunday came, the festival was over and it was the start of a new week for the Jewish people. As, as Sunday came, something very strange happened. Easter Sunday. For Christian people all over the world, it's probably the most special day of the year. And this is why. The tomb was empty. And that's not all. It gets better. Now there are four stories of that first Easter Sunday in the Bible from different people who saw it in different ways written in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke and John. And here's what we know from those stories. Early on the Sunday morning, just as the sun was rising, Mary Magdalene and some of her friends went to the tomb wanting to put some more spices and perfume on the body of Jesus. They were wondering how they would move that big stone away. But when they got there, it was already open and the soldiers were nowhere to be seen. When they looked inside the tomb, all they found were the cloths that the body had been wrapped in. Some said they felt earthquakes. Some said they saw angels. They were frightened and they didn't know what was happening. Mary Magdalene ran back to fetch Peter and another of Jesus' close friends. They ran to the tomb and found it empty, just like Mary had said. And then they went home, confused. But Mary stayed at the tomb and she was upset. She'd really wanted to see Jesus' body just one more time to help give him a good burial and make sure everything was done properly. But now she didn't know what was happening or where he was. Through her tears, she saw a man coming closer to her. She thought he might be the gardener. Why are you crying? The man asked. Mary was still upset and said, they've taken Jesus out of the tomb and I don't know where they've put him. Do you know where he is? Have you moved him? The man said to her, Mary. And then she knew it was Jesus. She wiped her eyes and could see his face. And she said, teacher. That's what she used to call him. And she wanted to hold on to him and never let him go. But Jesus said, don't hold on to me. I'm on my way to heaven to be with our Father. But go and tell the others that you've seen me. So she ran back and told all the other disciples, Jesus is alive. I've seen him. He is risen. And of course, they found that very hard to believe. 
But Jesus later appeared to ten of his disciples. And then the next week he appeared to Thomas as well, who was missing the first time round. And he appeared to two friends walking on a long journey. And he shared bread with them in a house, just like he had done before. This was no ghost. He could touch things and eat things. And one by one, they started to believe. And they would start to say, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Which means, praise God. It was good news after all. Good news for everyone. One time, Jesus appeared to seven of his friends when they were in a boat fishing. And he helped them to catch many, many fish. And he had a breakfast with them on the beach. And then he had a very special chat with Peter because he wanted him to know that he was forgiven. And he wanted Peter to lead the followers of Jesus who became known as the church. After Jesus went up to heaven, he gave them the power of the Holy Spirit to help them. And the good news started to spread to every part of the world. The soldiers said that what really happened was the disciples came in the night and stole the body from the tomb and made up the other stories to trick everyone. But what do you think? Remember those disciples, those frightened men who ran away when Jesus was arrested? Would they really come and fight the Roman guards and risk being killed themselves? Why would anyone risk their life for a dead body or to make up a lie? It's a question worth thinking about. Who do you believe in this story? When people die, it's very sad. And they don't come back to see us or to tell us about what happens after death. But Christians believe that just once, Jesus did. Because he truly was the Messiah, the Christ, the Son of God, God's special King. He came back and told us not to be afraid. He rose again and he invites us to trust in him and to trust in God. What does this story mean for you? For me, it says a lot about how special Jesus is. And it tells me that good wins in the end. God's love wins. Suffering and death are not the end. There may be bad things that still happen, but God goes through those bad times with us and God's love can't be beaten. It will come through in the end like a seed or a bulb that grows in the springtime. It gives me hope for this world and hope for life after this world, in the everlasting life God offers us. I know that Christians don't always get everything right, but I've come to believe that Jesus is God's way, God's truth and God's life, and I put my trust in him. There's a lot to take in there, and we're really at the end of our story. Although, of course, the story doesn't end there. It continues in the Bible and it continues with us. But shall we finish with a prayer? Let us pray. Dear God, in springtime you show us new life bursting up where things were cold and dead. In the story of Easter, you show us your life bursting from the tomb where everything looked very sad. We thank you for the amazing story of Easter. Help us to think about what it could mean for us that Jesus is risen. Help us to find hope that even when things seem bad, your love will find a way through. Bless us and keep us safe this Easter time. Be with anyone who is sad 
give us your joy and peace and let us know that you are always with us. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to this story. I hope it's made you interested to learn more and never stop exploring God's world and God's story. You can always find out more about Jesus from any of the churches or from the Bible and your teachers are there to help you too. So happy Easter everyone. Happy Easter. Mm -hmm.